Hey, what is up YouTube? This is uh, Full Hammer Gaming and we are looking at Battlefield 2042. Crazy, crazy. Here we are with the beta. Uh, closed beta at the moment for those who pre-ordered or are EA um, members of that subscription thing. I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, so uh, first impressions. I've been playing it um, on and off quite a bit today. Uh, done quite a lot of rounds. Obviously, there's just one map, which is Orbital, which uh, the developers have been going on about something chronic. Um, just uh, just how good it is and how it's like um, Caspian Border, I think it is, from Battlefield 4, I'm going to say, 3. Oh, I get so mixed up, and I'm doing this on the fly, but I find my commentary is better that way. Anyway, moving into it, what do I think? Uh, as if you need me to tell you what I think. Uh, I guess you don't know what I'm thinking otherwise, but you know what I mean. I don't need to tell you what you think. You can go out and play it soon if you haven't pre-ordered um, in a, just over a day. Anyway, so graphics. Man, 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 man. Yes, so playing this on the PS5, and it looks gorgeous the level of detail is fantastic it's it's a real showcase for what the ps5 can do which is one of the first games i've really played because i've been thirsty for a game on ps5 like i'm sure a lot of you have um so i've been playing still a lot of ps4 games or ps4 upgraded games for ps5 and it's not quite the same yeah you can really tell so like everything with the textures and the the lighting the ray tracing it just looks phenomenal it looks natural as well, um, which is really important. So things like grass, rocks, you know, things that are boring that you you don't necessarily take take in. Um, they look really real, really real, and this is a, a step up from uh, PS4 Pro. That is without a doubt. Um, things like trees and the way they move and the swaying in the wind and obviously the the uh, the damage you can cause to them. Is, you know, it just looks so realistic. I'd say that if I had any criticism, the um, it's not the draw distance because the draw distance is fantastic, um, but uh, graphics don't look quite as realistic the further afield you look. So aiming down a, a three times scope on an assault rifle, for example, um, you know, it doesn't look as good as the environment in your sort of 50 meter radius um, as such. Um, the layout for the HUD um, is clean and crisp. I would say it could do with a few tweaks. So I've looked in the menus. I can't really see. I haven't seen yet anyway, where you can increase the minimap size. That would be handy. Um, and some of the details like your health um, is a little bit um, small on the screen. I'm, I'm playing on a 65 inch um, TV and it, it can be a bit of a squint fest for, for, for quickly on the fly seeing how your health's doing. Obviously once you know it's there I guess it, it gets easier but uh, initially it's a little bit um, small and confusing but uh, really good. Menu systems seem really good. I quite like um, the style of, of the menu systems it seems to it's got that clean uh, battlefield feel about it um, but yeah graphics overall are like amazing absolutely fantastic um, it, you know things like explosion explosions and particularly the um, smoke particle effects are you know just amazing um, so yeah um, as you can hopefully see from some of the footage I've recorded for you here uh, I guess that moves into like the changing environments anyway the, dy the dynamic weather events um, only seen it briefly a few times or th the change from like fair, fair weather into poor weather um, but uh, when, when the stars, skies sorry, get, uh, get darker and the rain starts coming in um, it's, it's a, a complete feeling change you, you, in in normal life, if if you're out and about and it's a nice sunny day, and then a sudden, all of a sudden it you know clouds over and it starts to rain, and you you can feel the mood of your environment changing. It's exactly the same. They've really captured that well in uh, 2042, really really well. So it just helps with that immersion, um, and it changes the dynamic of the play as well, because obviously you 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 view your distance changes and things like that. So uh, also, I mean, I guess it kind of leads into the sound, but you know when it goes in, into a rainy environment, you get all the the raindrops and it's, it just feels um, authentic and realistic. Um, sound within the game, um, I would say it was average. Um, the, the, the sound explosions and um, effects are 
on par with what you'd expect for a current generation um, title um, of AAA triple a status anyway so yeah the, the the guns sound fantastic nice and beefy but not overly beefy so they're unrealistic aka sort of like duke nukem style uh, for those older players out there like me um yeah as, as far as uh, other sound effects go um yeah i mean i i did make sure to go into the menu options at the start and change it to headphones and 3d headphones support so it's maybe a little bit biased but i've come from playing a lot of apex recently as you may have seen if you watch any of my other videos and that everyone knows that the sound in apex is horrendous you can't tell directional um directional sounds whatsoever however um that is not the case in Battlefield 2042 that is um, it, it, you can pinpoint the sounds quite easily and it really helps you with, with your play and what's going on and again that immersion into the environment I'd say the uh, the map layout um, seems to be quite good it's it's quite it's built for continuous play so it's very rare that all the points within conquest on orbital are held at the uh, all held by one particular team it does happen um, of course it does uh, but it, it doesn't last for long um, and i think the map is deliberately designed like that to keep the gameplay rolling so a team can't easily steamroll you and keep you pinned down um, so that hopefully would avoid um sort of uh, spawn trapping which is a thing that's always been a bugbear in battlefield of course that's if you're being trapped if you're the trappers it's have a and enjoy yourselves um so yeah it does seem that the map layout is quite good i would say that traversing the map um can be a bit laborious at times so you'll quite often find and i'll link into this in a minute the uh, the vehicles will will be not available and so you have to spawn um at one particular place to to walk uh, or sprint your your way across the map um and because the maps are quite large because they have to be because it's 128 player count player base um per map um or for the conquest mode yeah it, it, you know um because the maps are quite large because of that then it does mean you're traversing across the map on foot for quite some way um not a lot of sniper action though so it's not as if um i've not been able to get from where i am to where i want to be and um, with too much problem um obviously sometimes a little bit of duck and diving and of course you get destroyed by uh, helicopters if you're not careful um <laughs> helicopters already uh, a feature of death in battlefield 2042 um obviously you can spawn on squad and you can spawn on capture points um uh, but that's not always convenient to you um it's not always possible for the way you want to traverse the map um so yeah like i say the the maps are well laid out uh or the 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 map orbital is seems very well laid out um and it it's, it it keeps a constant fluidity of play which is always good I suppose the big thing about Battlefield, and particularly Battlefield 2042, that everyone's going to be looking at is vehicles. Um, I'm going to the joys out for me on the vehicles at the moment because I they well I guess the reason for that um, is partly because they're not as available as I'd like them to be. Um, you choose them from your, your spawn point, and you can also pick them up in in within the map um, while whilst on cap points and stuff. But yeah they they seem to be as, as sparse as ever as they always are in battlefield and that kind of keeps exclusivity uh, in place i guess as well but when i have got in um i have honestly found the vehicles quite difficult to use um and i think it's a case of um you know sort of hard to start with but uh, difficult to master but when you do master them yeah fantastic um i am not very good with helicopters at all um particularly good with um crashing them and uh, crash and burn um I, I have had limited success with the uh the jets and uh, managed to take another guy out which was pretty cool um as for ground vehicles so all of you so far is a buggy um uh, it's quite quite easy or the quad whatever you want to call it and the tanks i've briefly driven tanks uh, mostly been in secondary or third seats on the tanks and um, I find the weapons are quite 
quite hard to uh, to gauge your what you think you're firing and where actually you hit lands. So yeah, I think it, that's more of a uh, experience thing. I think um, they've changed up the vehicles to feel a lot more tactical. Um, so and th and that I think is very good. I think that um, the game will feel more tactical than previous Battlefields that we've known, certainly more than uh, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, uh, which is really, really good because they felt a little bit more like they were kind of heading towards the COD side of uh, first-person shooters, whereas now it feels like they're drawing back into a tactical uh, Battlefield. It feels like a, a proper gritty Battlefield game, which is great. Especially for people, you know, I started out on Battlefield 2142, which is still my current um, all-time favourite Battlefield ever. Obviously that was PC only, but that was, uh, if you ever got to play that, well, that was amazing. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the vehicles. I say, um, it kind of goes on to kind of a loose connection, but gunplay and gunfights. So, gunplay feels solid. Um, it took me a little while to get used to it, like it like it should do, um, and the gunplay does feel quite satisfying. It doesn't feel like instant death, which has been the bane of many a first-person shooter, and um, as, and also for Battlefield uh, in more recent iterations, the it doesn't every fight gunfight feels like a fair fight. It doesn't feel like you've you know just been melted um, whilst you've been laying down loads of fire. Um, I don't know if that's because they've got good net code on this battlefield and all the servers are just on point and not lagging at all. But the first impression of gunplay, it feels solid. It feels gritty. It feels like a proper firefight, um, and it feels like you have control of what's going on, especially with the attachment selection for the guns, as we've all seen. The favourite. Uh, famous uh, cross, I don't know what you call it, the sort of the, the cross attachment selection. Um, but they, it's really good. It's really quick, really easy to change and change out your um, your loadout as you're going, uh, as you're traversing the map, or you know within battle. Um, and it may it literally is a game changer. I think they're really on something there. I think that's something a lot of first-person shooters are probably going to try and emulate and copy at some point in the future. Um, I touched upon um, server quality to some ago, so yeah, it's definitely a case of the servers seem like there's like little to no lag that I'm experiencing anyway. Um, I'm on a fibre connection, but not like the most expensive fibre connection, sort of averagey, uh, but it's still fibre to the house. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know, compared to other games, the there's just little to no lag uh, maybe when in a vehicle where there's someone else driving it and I'm in a secondary or third gun um, and then you will notice like some some laggy uh, effects but apart from that it's it just feels like where you shoot in hits on point on time where you expect it to in the time you expect it to um, it definitely definitely feels um, like they've done something amazing um, with the server connections which is quite unusual for a beta uh, obviously they're testing server and low capacity and things as well um, so they're using us to, to you know test test their game on mass um, so yeah I was, I was quite surprised by that I've had no problems getting into games um, it's really quick each and every time I've not had any long waits whatsoever uh, before connecting to a match load times are really really quick similarly so yeah, oh, um, so the attachment and gear selection, I suppose we should go back to, because um, I'm not sure how they're going to do it in the final game. So I would hope that the guns that you select, um, AK-24 is it, I think, um, for, ex for example, I use that occasionally, um, I would hope that the, the quick select um, attachments that are available to you are swappable perhaps um, because I wouldn't like to think that the only attachments you can have for each gun are, are what is available within the um, that, that quick select selection uh, area if that makes sense I'm confusing myself I don't know um, basically what I mean is it doesn't seem like there's a lot, whole lot of attachments per gun to swap in and out during the match so I don't know if that means that um, when uh, setting out your loadout prior to match which you can't do in the beta um, that you'd have more options that you can swap in and out um, that said um, the gear selection and the hero selection is 
looking to be really good. It looks like there's a lot of choices where you can set up your soldier to be the player that you want it to be um, and set it up to your playstyle, which is <laughs> really important. It also means you can like cross attach um, items so you can have a midi crate for for a sniper for example and things like that so you have more control over your player and how you play your game um, which is something has always been felt like a confinement in previous first person shooters in say like COD or, or Battlefield as the two main examples so it seems like they're really breaking some, uh, some good ground here. Um, I'd say that the squad play I have yet to play with any friends um, just because it's been out for a day less than um, and I haven't managed to squad up with any friends the squad selection with friends does look like you can party up quite easy um, playing with randoms though I would say although um, Battlefield is a squad based game I've not seen much if any squad play to be honest I've seen a little bit you know obviously when you spawn on squad member but that's just so they or you can spawn on and then run off in your own direction. There doesn't seem to be a lot of coherency and uh, reward for sticking with your squad. Um, I'm sure that there'll be ribbons and various actions that will be rewarded in the full game or maybe even in the beta that I haven't found yet. Um, but it doesn't seem that there's the emphasis on squad play that there once was. Um, I'm sure that will change as people adapt and realise that actually the way to be better in game um, and secure that win will be no doubt squad play because you know, as we all know from all games uh, first person shooters uh, squads are best um, the beta does have its glitches um, both in the menu system so there's some, some weird doubling up and obviously they've disabled some options in the um, in the menu system all the options um, and there's of course uh, the occasional graphical glitches but actually it seems really solid there's very little it is a beta there's going to be it can't be marked down at all for that and that's not what I'm saying but I quite like the random things that can happen in Battlefield I think we all do um, where you get a player slingshot across the map randomly and stuff like that it's the things we look out for the things we uh, we hope for um, just to have a, a good giggle during the middle of a match um, but yeah there's a few a uh, few tears in places there's a few strange lighting effects um, sometimes I think the puts a filter on in certain areas so like if it's cold everything goes blue that seems a little bit too heavy-handed um, if I'm cold not everything turns blue um, hopefully the same is for you if that is the case maybe see a doctor but um, yeah I think that's that's rather than a glitch that's that's more sort of um, uh, artists um, impression is is left a, is a little bit too heavy-handed on some areas, but there yeah, there's some graphical tears, some artifact in uh, a couple of uh, artifacts I've noticed in game. Hopefully that's not on PS5, it's the actual game, and uh, a few um, funny little bugs uh, with uh, drivers of vehicles left just floating without a vehicle in in uh, the middle of the air and stuff like that. But uh, overall, yeah, it's pretty solid. I mean, obviously it's it should have been out this month. It's not. It's been delayed. So you'd expect the beta to be pretty much there I guess um, but it's a good sign it's a good sign that uh, Battlefield 2042 is on track for release in November I think it's the 18th or 19th I can't remember but it's some point in November uh, and I'm sure you'll be screaming at me going Jesus don't you know Battlefield it's the blah 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 anyway and um, that's my first impressions I um, hope that's kind of given you if you haven't had a chance to get on giving you a bit of an insight into what it's like um, and uh, yeah, as soon as that open beta opens, if you haven't got a pre-order or part of uh, EA uh, or whatever it's called, subscription, EA Play, no, EA, oh, I forgot, I'm going to kick myself after this. Um, yeah, so if you've still got a day or so to wait, uh, hopefully this video has helped so you can see what to expect, but definitely download it, it's amazing. Alright, take care guys, see you later, bye.